Hello learners, welcome to our National Achievement Test Review. For today's review, we will focus on the subjects Earth Science, Physics, Chemistry, and Physical Science. Item number one, living organisms cannot exist in isolation. They must interact with abiotic factors in order to survive. Which among the organisms is considered abiotic? A. Bacteria B. Plant C. Light D. Man That is right. The correct answer is C. Light. Now, an abiotic factor is a non-living part of an ecosystem that shapes its environment. Alright, so let's move on to item number two. Which of the following reveals whether an object is in equilibrium? A. The object is in motion. B. The forces acting are not equal. C. The object moving at a constant speed. And D. The net force is equal to zero. The correct answer is C and D. The object moving at a constant speed and the net force is equal to zero. Now, if the object is at equilibrium, then the net force acting upon it should be zero newton. Now, the law of inertia could be at rest or in motion, but no net force or the so-called imbalance force. Alright, so let's move on to item number 3. The Earth is the only planet in the solar system that supports life. Which of these best explains the statement? A. The Earth is exposed to the sun's rays. B. The Earth has only one moon that orbits around it. C. The Earth rotates on its axis. And D. The Earth has a breathable atmosphere. That is right. The correct answer for this item is the letter D. The Earth has a breathable atmosphere. Now, it is at the right distance from the sun. It is protected from harmful solar radiation by its magnetic field. Also, it is kept warm by an insulating atmosphere. And um, it has the right chemical ingredients for life, including water and carbon. Okay, so let's move on to item number 4. How did the scientists organize the fossils they collected? A. They were able to arrange the fossils according to age. B. They were able to arrange the fossils according to structure. C. They were able to arrange the fossils according to chemical content. And D. They were able to arrange the fossils according to their place of discovery. The correct uh, answer for this item is letter A. They were able to arrange the fossils according to age. Now, scientists are able to arrange fossils according to age. This is called a fossil record. By studying the fossil record, um, scientists have found that the Earth and its life forms have gone through many changes in the past. Also, fossils have taught us how and when rock layers have formed and they have also helped um, scientists learn about life forms to have come and gone. Now, fossils have even taught us about the climate and the earth long ago. Alright, so let's move on to item number 5. What is the process whereby sand and silt grains in moist soil are rearranged and the water between the grains is compressed as a result of earthquake shaking. A. Ground shaking, B. Landslides, C. Liquefaction, and D. Tsunami. Right, so the correct answer for this item is liquefaction. Now, liquefaction takes place when loosely packed and waterlogged sediments 
at the near of the ground surface lost their strength in response to strong ground shaking. Alright, so let's move on to item number 6. When the thermometer is put into boiling water and it reads 100 degrees, which temperature scale is being used? A. Kelvin B. Celsius C. Rankine and D. Fahrenheit Alright, so the correct answer for this is letter B, Celsius. Now, most scientific fields measure temperature using a Celsius scale. 0 degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water and 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. As shown, a light ray is entering a container of water. As the light ray enters water, it bends due to A. Reflection, B. Diffraction, C. Refraction, and D. Interference. Alright, so the correct answer here is refraction. Now when we say refraction, it is the bending of light. It also happens when sound, with sound, water, and other waves as it passes from one transparent substance into another. Now, this bending by refraction uh, makes it possible for us to have lenses, magnifying glasses, prisms, and rainbows. Um, even our eyes depend on, its, uh, on this bending of light. Alright, so let's move on to item number 8. Except where noted, the evidence for the continental drift hypothesis is as follows. A. Continental pu puzzle B. Match fossils C. Asian climates and D. Plate tectonics Right, so the correct answer for this is letter D. Now, the theory of continental drift is almost associated with the scientist Alfred Wegener in the early 20th century. Now, Wegener published a paper explaining the theory that the continental land masses were drifting across the earth, sometimes flowing through um, oceans and into each other. Let's move on to item number 9. Which would fall with greater acceleration in a vacuum? Let's see the figure. A feather or a coin? Letter A, a feather. B, the coin. C, they would accelerate at the same rate. And D, it is difficult to determine without more information. Um, the correct answer for this item is letter C. They would accelerate at the same rate. Now, it's important to remember that the initial accelerations of the coin and the feather are the same regardless of whether they fall on air or in a vacuum. However, in air, the feather quickly reaches its terminal velocity and then ceases to accelerate. Whereas, the coin does not... Um, does not and continues to accelerate downward. Okay, so let's move on to item number 10. What are the two classes of motion according to Aristotle? A. Natural motion and dynamic motion B. Natural motion and sliding motion C. Natural motion and violent motion and D, natural motion and weak motion. Alright, so for this item, the correct answer is letter C, natural motion and violent motion. Now, natural motion is when something moves uh, to its natural place. By, meanwhile, violent motion is forced motion of an object away from its natural place. Let's proceed to item number 11. 
which law says that an object's speed is directly related to the net force acting on it and inversely related to its mass. A. Law of acceleration B. Law of interaction C. Law of inertia and letter D. Boyle's law Right, so for this item, the correct answer is A, law of acceleration. Now, to understand this, we must use Newton's second law, the law of acceleration, which is acceleration is equal to force over mass. Alright, so let's proceed to item number 12. Which of the following can be formed on a spoon's bulging and reflective surface? A. Virtually upright and larger than the object B. Virtual inverted and larger than the object C. Virtual upright and smaller than the object and D. Virtual inverted and smaller than the object Alright, so the correct answer is letter C, virtual upright, and smaller than the object. Now, the bulge part of the spoon acts as a convex mirror, and we know that a convex mirror always um, forms a virtual, erect, and smaller image. Prior to 500 BC, it was believed that the earth was a flat but owing to experts such as Aristotle and Pythagoras, people understand that the shape of the Earth is A. Round, B. Oval, C. Spherical, and D. Perfect Circle. Okay, so the correct answer for this item is letter C. Spherical. Now, Aristotle in 384 to 322 BC before Christ was among the first to recognize the fact that our planet is being a round sphere. Now, he observed lunar eclipses and uh, noticed that only the round sphere could imply a circular shadow. This atmospherical um, observation was confirmed by general observations made at that era. Let's move on to item number 14. Now, how does the conduction of the surface of the Earth affect the temperature of our atmosphere? A. Air molecules come into the contact with the warmer surface of the land and ocean, resulting it in an increase of their tem uh, thermal energy. Letter B. Air molecules come into contact with the cooler surface of the Earth and ocean, or land and ocean, resulting in a decrease in their thermal energy. Letter C, air molecules do not come in contact with the warmer surfaces of the land and the ocean, resulting in an increase in their thermal energy. And D, air molecules do not come in contact with the cooler surfaces of the land and ocean, resulting in an increase of their thermal energy. Okay, so let's move on to the answer for that item. It's letter A, air molecules come into contact with the warmer surfaces of the land and ocean resulting in an increase of their thermal energy. So conduction is the process by which heat energy is transmitted through collisions between neighboring and atoms and molecules. Now conduction occurs uh, more readily uh, in solids and liquids where the particles and closer together are, are closer together and then in gases where um, particles are further apart. Alright, so let's move on to the last item. The chemical symbol of copper is A C letter B C O and C C it's C O and D C U. Right, so the correct answer for this item is letter D, Cu, wherein the chemical symbol for copper is Cu. Now, C is for carbon, Co is for carbon monoxide, and Co is for cobalt. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've learned a lot from our review today. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you!